guys happy a Friday. It's a little bit after five o'clock. Look what just arrived. Not sponsored, by the way. How have you guys been? Happy March. It is March 1st. Where did February go? I feel like I, I, I have my receipt and uh, I'd like a refund because it's not what I expected. <laughs> You know what? I can't complain though. It's been it's been a great month. Our little Etsy shop or adventure is going great. So I'm very excited about that. I'm also very excited about this manicure. Let me show you guys. Actually, hold. Hold, please. I have the bottles here so that I can show you. I'm a very visual person. One of you guys actually messaged me on Etsy and were like, hey, I don't know how to put the lanyard on my phone. I'm a visual learner, so can you show me? I'm like, Psh no problem absolutely i am too if i read something it's difficult for me to grasp the concept then if someone shows me like in a tangible way or explains to me verbally with a lot of details so i need to get where the sun is gonna like blind me so that you guys can get the best view so where hold on there we go maybe here or I could just not be lazy and go outside. You know, there's that option. All right. So, can you guys see? Look at that. How beautiful are my nails? And they are the type of formula that dries really thin, really fast, and lasts a long time. See, here's the thing. I love opaque polishes, like a solid pink or a solid red, or just, I'm going to stand here so I don't get a corneal laceration. Those are my favorites, like cream, cream bases. But with metallics like these, I don't even know if these are metallics or shimmers or whatever, I'm not a nail connoisseur, but they're, they're like a thinner formula, so you can layer them on more, they chip less, and when they do chip, they're a lot more forgiving because they're a little more camouflage. So the Lights Lacquer Collection, the new collection, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a fairy theme. Beautiful colors. And I started to do my nails with wings and things, which makes me think of the wing restaurant if you're from San Diego. <laughs> so I did my nails with this color. And before I top coated it, I was like, man, I really wish I had done this one too. Like I wanted to do both. So I did, but I put them together like I sandwiched them. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? I know, I know. It's super stunning. Okay, enough about, that's like 20 minute long intro, just about my nails. Okay, so my wild grain order arrived and while yes, wild grain has been one of our sponsors, they've sponsored one video. Every other time that you've seen wild grain in my content or we featured it is because we get it and we don't get it just once a month. So this is one of those subscriptions where yeah, you, you're, supposed to get it once a month, but I see myself usually ordering it every two to three weeks because my youngest little man is obsessed with sour bread. And the funny thing is that one of you said, that is the best sourdough I have ever had in your comment. And I was like, you know, I had the same thought and I thought I was being dramatic. Like I usually am. But I can honestly tell you that I don't think I have ever had sourdough bread that is as delicious as it is. What I will tell you as your friend and because I love you is don't try their chocolate croissants. Whatever you do, just don't order them. D don't. Oh my God, the chocolate croissants. <laughs> so they come in a pack of four and you could tell they are approved by my loving husband. They come in a pack of four. And I told Parker, hey, you know, the last time I placed an order for sour bread, sourdough, Daniel calls it sour bread in case you weren't here and missed that part. So the last time I ordered, I was like, sure, I'll add them to my cart, see what's up. I mean, chocolate croissants are delicious. Any croissant is delicious. It comes in a pack of four. So I very modestly took two out, and that's the beauty of it, is they're frozen, like, you know, you can just pull one out, it's not just one big blob. Pulled two out put them in the oven, and I thought, hey, Parker, when we're done with dinner, we can try the croissants. I didn't vlog it, by the way, I probably should have, because we looked like feral animals eating them. So much so that I went out to the freezer and I got the two others, and then we each ate, ate two. <laughs> they are amazing. 
Today didn't go according to plan as usual in these vlogs I mentioned. So I was supposed to get up early, get cute, cause we have date night right now. And while I did get up early, I had a million and a half things to do because we have a full weekend baseball tournament for both of the boys. They are both playing at the same place at the same time, the entire weekend. And Sunday is the day Parker leaves for a business trip and he's gonna be gone for like the entire week, which is a good thing because then maybe I can just buy takeout for the week and not cook dinner, which means there won't be a dirty kitchen. I mean, the kitchen's still gonna be dirty, let's be honest. But I'm, I'm, that's like the only thing I'm looking forward to. I'm not looking forward to being by myself. I'm not looking forward to like not seeing my husband. I'm not looking forward to like, when Parker's not here, it's not like he's not here because my two boys are like my two miniature husbands. Oh, does Parker know about that? Oh, what's Parker gonna say? Does Parker know you bought that? Is, is Parker coming home soon? When is Parker getting here? Oh, are you gonna wear that? Does, does Parker know you have that shirt? You know, so <laughs> it's not like his absence will be felt because the two mini Parkers will be here. But so anyway, I was like scrambling all day and now I don't even look cute for date night. I, this is this is what's happening. Meanwhile, my husband's gonna walk out of those doors back there looking like a freaking supermodel. Anyway, do you wanna see the chocolate croissants? They're frozen, but you know what? I don't know if seeing a frozen croissant is gonna do, do it justice. Just believe me when I say don't buy them because they are so problematic. You know what? I think like in my subconscious, what I'm trying to do is get you to not buy them so that you don't buy all of them. And that way when I buy them, there's there's still some, I really hope they're not seasonal. Cause you know, they have like seasonal breads and seasonal this and seasonal that and seasonal cranberry, whatever. Let me see if I can give you guys a good view here. <laughs> Put my nail polish here. So, they, oh my gosh, they have so many seasonal items. I hope these chocolate croissants weren't like a February Valentine's Day thing because I would die. I told you I was dramatic. No, 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 I would die. I mean, I didn't die with Caress or my panty liners or my favorite mascara or everything else that I've discontinued in the world, like the root beer float from Jack in the Box or the Double Decker Supreme at Taco Bell. Like I discontinue all the things I love. So I think that now that I put it out into the universe that I can't live without chocolate croissants from Wild Grain, I think it's, I, I, I think I gave it, I think I'm the Black Widow. I just, I did, I gave it a death's kiss. All right, hold please. Ooh, ah! Uh oh. Parker, dry ice just fell all over the kitchen. Are we gonna die? No. Are you sure? Cause it's like vibrating the sink and the, and the counter, look. Ooh, cool science. Look, is that bad? <laughs> Will it burn the counter? No. Are you sure? Yeah. It's like moving around like, like. Oh my God. It's alive. Yeah, you can't touch it with your hands, you guys. Cause you'll die. Just like I'll die if they discontinue the chocolate croissants. Don't touch it with your hands. You need your hands for your presentation. <laughs> you know, it's his money maker, man. Okay, hold on. After I did that, look it. <gasps> I know, they're like, they look like a hot pocket. When I received them the first time, I was like, oh no, it's broken. But you can tell it's, it's like rock solid. This has been out for delivery since 7.30 in the morning and I was telling Parker, I'm like, we're gonna go to date night and they're gonna arrive because they can arrive all the way up till 8 p.m. And, and then they're not gonna be frozen anymore. He's like, I'm sure they'll be fine. Typical man, typical Virgo. You know what I'm saying? He's like, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Over here, I'm like already SOS, like smoke signals, call the police. Um, but like, no, it's like frozen solid. I'm still gonna bake those little pieces. But it looks like a hot pocket. It's super like inconspicuous, like, you don't think anything of it. Just do yourself a favor and order the croissants. This is what they're called, chocolate avalanche croissants. Okay, another one of our family's favorites are the um, chocolate chip cookies. And I think these were the, I wonder if these were the promo. I think the promo, when we worked together, we, like us, girlfriend, I think was the croissants, like the regular croissants, which remind me of Thanksgiving, they're like, literally Thanksgiving croissants. 
the chocolate chip cookies, when I bake them, as soon as they come out of the oven and they're soft, I cut them in half because they are massive. And it makes me feel like I'm not eating too much, even though I'll eat the full cookie. But when you cut it, it's like, you know, it's Jedi mind tricks. No, I'm really that simple. So we got the cookies. Mind your business. But mind your business again. And then a whole bunch of this for my child who likes sour bread. He will eat it when he comes home from school. He'll eat it with dinner. He'll have it for breakfast with a little butter and a banana. That boy and his love of sour bread is, is impressive. And who's blowing me up? Of course it's my mother. Of course it's my mother. Okay, so we got a bunch of those, but I got one more. Here, this is a new flavor of sour bread. It's the sourdough rosemary garlic. I can't smell it. I thought I would be able to, but I guess that wouldn't be good because then my croissants would smell like garlic and rosemary. Are we onto something? Garlic, rosemary, and chocolate. I would try it. The regular loaf comes in like the oval and then the fun sourdough ones, like the flavory ones. Oh my God, mother, one text at a time, one text. Are you guys multiple texters? Like do you spam text when you have a thought? Boom, 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 boom. Or do you just send one big blurb? I'm a spam texter, but I, I don't like when other people are. <laughs> so the fun loaves always have the little round shape and then the uh, regular ones have the oval shape. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have to tell you about a panda. Shout out to my panda in LA. She messaged me on Etsy and was like, in a few words, this is not what she said. You guys know I'm super dramatic, but in a few words, she was like, I hate you for introducing me to wild grain because it's literally the best sourdough I've ever had in my life. And I'm like, I know, right? So much so that she asked for a custom pop socket that says, in my sourdough era. <laughs> I was like, I had to like message her and be like, oh, that's so funny, are you sure? She's like, oh yeah, I'm sure. And I was like, your wish is my command, just call me the genie. So, all right, wild grain, date night. We are going to a sushi restaurant we haven't been to before. I'm wearing my Target shirt, you guys. Look, and I did that cute little fold. You guys know that trick where you tuck the, um, the points of the shirt into each other so that you don't get that big bubble here in the front. Oh my gosh, look it up you guys, it's so awesome. And it helps you wear all your tailored shirts in like a really flatter kind of way. Anyway, so we're going to date night to a sushi restaurant and I'm gonna look this fabulous. And then tomorrow, both boys have the 8 a.m. slot, which means we have to be there at seven. And then both boys are playing the, I think, 11.30 slot. So that'll be fun. I have to show you guys what I did. But first, I should probably put this away because I made such a big deal about my chocolate croissants that I would hate for them to like not be nice and ready for when we get home from date night. Oh my God, chocolate croissants for date night. But now that I know that we each can eat two, I should probably just do all four at the same time. Because you don't want that lag to happen in between servings where your brain catches up to your stomach and you're like, wait, am I full? No, you don't want that to happen. You wanna, you wanna be able to indulge appropriately. Okay, you guys, tell me you're a baseball mom without telling me you're a baseball mom. So I ordered these maybe two months ago, anticipating spring, like the spring season and I am so excited to finally be able to get to use them. Although I'm not sure how easy they are going to be to carry them around with me during the games, but we'll get to find out tomorrow since they're both playing at the same time. See if you can guess which one is which. <laughs> oh my goodness. Who is this very cute fella? You should remember him because this was Beauty Blender age. You know Beauty Blender age? He would like creep up behind me when I was in the middle of a video and like bump a Beauty Blender all over his face. This is Tater, he's my little Mateo. So I got his big head and then, oh my goodness. <laughs> 
Look at this one. Oh, he still looks the same. I mean, it's like he was, I don't remember. I think he was like two or three here and he's almost nine and he looks exactly the same. So that is to the degree of how invested I've gotten. I mean, I have my own little scoreboard. I have my own little play. I still don't know the vernacular, by the way, but I also did this. Oh, I went there. Okay, so do you see? It says the team and then it says number 27's mom. Wait for it. Wait for it. Hold on. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Oh no. Okay. Hold please. So then you do this. Ideally you don't do it while you're wearing it because then it's like really hard. And then, boom. Look at that. I got the idea from Parker, A, because he loves patches. He has patches for everything, every department he's ever worked for, everything he's ever done. He has like all these, you know how guys are when they're in that like law enforcement, military, whatever, they love their patches. So he has a really cool, super expensive, fancy hat that he like has patches on it. And I found this one on Amazon, I think it was like 10 bucks. And it has, it has like a little Velcro on the top for stuff. And then it has a little Velcro strip on the back. So that's where you put like, come and get me bro, or come and take it. Or you know what I'm saying? Like those, those like super, super America um, patches. And then it had this little one on the front. And the hat actually comes in a million different colors. And it has a little American flag. Like it comes with patches already. So I ordered these on Etsy. I feel like I was a little mis misled because the way that they say they're going to look versus how they actually look when they show up is a little different. And I'm okay with that, but they were kind of expensive. They were $35 each, each. I did this to myself, Let, let's be honest. Like I did it to myself. However, the kids aren't gonna care. They're just gonna love that their mama is supporting them and that's all we're doing. That's all, that's all we're here for, is to make memories and to make them feel safe and that their mama loves them and supports them and has a hat that she can do this. And then like tomorrow, when I'm running from field to field, cause they're playing at the same time, I could be like, boom, boom. So like for Mateo's game, I'm staff, right? Like people, like the parents know me. I have a lot of friends there. Like we've created a culture with Daniel's team. It's kind of a new experience and I'm not in yet. And I don't, I don't think I ever will, will be if you catch my drift. So I can do this. And then when I go to Daniel's game, I could be like, I don't care. I don't care that you don't want to be my friend and I can wear my hat like that. I, I should really think this through, but you, you pick up my drift, right? All right, our reservations, I think are at six. And this is as ready as I'm gonna get. I do think, however, I should probably change my shoes because I'm wearing sneakers right now. But uh, everything that I'm wearing is, is Amazon. You guys know it's, it's like the only things I ever wear. is eating her dinner. She has this thing where if while she's eating, I change my behavior, she will stop eating. So I'm stuck in this room until she's done, which is fine. I love her and it's what we do. You know what I'm saying? Well, since I have you guys, oh, how funny does that look? <laughs> since I have you, oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. Tell me you have ADD without telling me you have ADD. You see how like short my attention span is? There we go. All right, now we have an appropriate background. <laughs> so while I have you, I was editing the vlog from last weekend to post tomorrow. And I was like, what is this? What? This is a vlog about nothing. And I almost, almost erased it all and just threw it out the window and said, you know what, no vlog. But, the comment that always keeps me coming back is, I just prop you up while I do my chores. You know, it's like hanging out with a girlfriend. You know, I can't, I answer your questions. You can't hear me, but I answer your questions, you know? And that's exactly how I feel when I'm vlogging. I mean, hello. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, on the off chance that it's either like no vlog or this. And what I was thinking is I'm like, I hang out with my girlfriend sometimes and we don't say like important, like, 
catastrophic, life-changing events. It's not always super crazy. Sometimes it's just shooting the... That's why the expression exists. So I do apologize for not living a more interesting life. No, I don't apologize for that. I do apologize for vlogging it. <laughs> but all of that to say is this vlog might be very similar because when it's baseball mode, it's baseball mode. Not to mention it's gonna be prepping Parker to be out of town for a week mode. And that's like packing your children's clothes. You know, like, do you have your toothbrush? Do you have your this? Oh, and I probably have to give him a haircut. Man, that man's hair grows like faster than crabgrass in the spring. I don't know if that's a good example, but it's the only thing I could come up with. So anyway, that is it for our Friday. All you can take away from this is you need to get a big head for your kid if he's in sports or she, actually that'd be super cute. You need to try the chocolate croissants from Wild Grain. I'll link the patches. Actually, yeah, I'll link the patches. I think my logos were just too complicated. That's why they're a little blurry looking. Uh, but I'll definitely link the hat so that you guys can stick your patches to. I mean, that's cute, right? I think it's adorable. Anyway, we are off to dinner, but I think that's it. Until I get up tomorrow at 7 a.m. and script. No, I have to get up like at five because I have to be there at seven. Anyway, I gotta go. Bye. <laughs>
on testing products, feminine hygiene products until recently. What? I'm sorry, what? So what, we were like out there just risking it or what? <laughs> what the hell? Anyway, what I'm getting at is it was such an exhausting weekend. I really thought I was prepared. I really thought I got enough time to catch up. By the way, my face is shiny because I just got out of the shower. I have sunscreen on my face and this is what the glow looks like. No, this is just, this is tired, but clean, okay? <laughs> we should put that on, a, we should put that on a phone grip. Tired, but clean. So anyway, I really thought that was enough time for me to recover. I really did. I really thought, I'm like, yes, because I do miss it. When I heard that they were going to have their first game, I'm like, yes, I'm into it. I got my patch hat. I'm ready. I'm stoked. I'm excited. Oh my God. It's so exhausting. I mean, I want to say like sympathetically, empathetically, like, wow, these boys must be so tired. But I remember being that age. I mean, you just dust yourself off and you're like, what are we doing now? Where are we going now? Are we gonna go to the movies? Are you gonna go shopping? Can I go with you? What are we gonna do? Do you wanna play with me? You wanna color? Do you wanna play you wanna play Switch? Do you wanna play Fortnite? I remember being that age. Like nothing is, is exhausting. But I don't ever remember being this age. This is the first time in my life I am this age, and I'm like, gosh, you know, I I could have like a sore back for the next two weeks just because I slept wrong. <laughs> if you are young and watching this vlog. This, we need like some like slow, like Sarah McLaughlin type music right now, you know? Consider this your PSA and my good deed of the day. If you are young and watching this vlog, take a minute, take an unfiltered picture of yourself, your hands, your neck, even your feet. Oh, definitely your thighs. And, and remember this moment. Remember how you feel. Remember how easy it is to get up from the floor when you sit on the floor. Remember how easy it is to put on your shoes. Also, uh, remember how easy it is to go out at night and then go to work in the morning or go to school and then do it again the next night. Also remember that you can remember <laughs> because pretty soon your thighs aren't gonna look that way. They're gonna look like, like maps of the West Nile. Your hands are going to look like, uh, like the Declaration of Independence. Your memories will no longer be memories because when you have them, then you'll forget them and then you'll never remember them again. So, <laughs> if you are young, please don't abuse your youth. Like, wisdom is like wasted on the youth. You know what I mean? Like, what's that saying? Like, we don't appreciate it when we're young, man. And then we're old and we're like, oh, my bag hurts. My stomach hurts. I can't eat hot Cheetos anymore. It's the, it's the worst. Anyway, I'm sorry for this long introduction. That's just to say that's why I sucked at vlogging because I was dying. <laughs> Co-parent and I had the brilliant idea to double book tournaments, Daniel and Mateo's. But it's fine because they're at the same place, the same weekend, at the same park. It was not fine because it was just a reminder that because he's head coach for Mateo's team, he has to stay there. And because I'm not, I have to go to Daniel's games and none of the moms are my friend. Said friends, my friends. None of the moms are my friends. We're the new ones. And as, Dan as much as Daniel tells me like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't feel really good. He's my, he's my, he's about to be nine, but he's like going on 50. And going on 50 of an adult that's had extensive therapy. And so he's like, you know, mom, I just, is this, is this high enough? I'm not sure that's the view you want of me, but maybe if I slouch a little. He's like, you know what, mom? I just, I really don't think this is, this is going to be the team for me. Uh, you know, it was a pre-made team and they all have relationships already. And I'm the new guy and... It's really hard for me to like to break in. And so while I'm crying on the inside because I'm so proud of him for using that vernacular, at the same time, I have to like turn on mom mode and be like, well, buddy, you know, if you go in with that mindset, then that mindset will continue because that's what you're believing. But if you 
allow it to be blank. Like you're starting a new video game or you're starting a new app that you've never tried, then you don't know where it's gonna go. Like you don't know what the outcome's gonna be. And what if this is an opportunity for you to make like friends for the rest of your life? Like friends that, you know, you'll go to college with or you'll go to each other's weddings. Like how do you, you're closing off your opportunities of creating these new relationships if you already have your mind made up of what you think they are. And obviously I am the queen of giving the best advice that I should be taking myself. But yeah, I'm having a really hard time making friends. So I just sit there by myself at Daniel's like games and tournaments because I don't know, I just, I have really bad RSD from a very bad childhood when it came to social relationships. So because of that, I have a very, very strong gut and intuition, and I am 99% of the time right. Uh, and, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's worth the risk, sometimes it's not, and I'm not getting that vibe that it's, it's worth the risk. With Mateo's team, I instantly got the vibe that it was like, yeah, you need to, you need to like, pursue these women <laughs> and I did and we're all really close now and just absolutely have a blast every time we go we're always like nervous that this might be the game we get kicked out from <laughs> I mean we piss off the we piss off the umps so I already told the ladies I was like we need to get custom shirts if you guys have like a Etsy shop or some kind of crafting ability in terms of screen printing shirts hats or whatever we're looking for shirts or hats or something that say I love you blue or blues are my favorite, you know, with like a little ump face mask or whatever. Obviously I'm really good at baseball language, okay? So all of this long, super long winded uh, vlog to say the weekend was a blur. Like it was an exhaustive blur, not to mention yesterday, Parker left for his business trip. He's gonna be gone all week. But date night, you guys, I have to tell you about date night. Date night was hysterical. We haven't had date night in a long time and we're about to get really personal. So if you guys know Parker or Parker's family, can uh, don't sell me out, okay? So we've had sort of like a rough go at it because we're in one of those seasons in life where life is just nonstop. His job is all consuming. He's on call 24 seven. He's always working. And when he's not, he's catching up from always working. So he's like a shell of a man because he's so tired. And I'm so proud of him because he's really, really pioneering something impressive and super important for his work right now. And it's just like, that's mine. You know, like I married that. Yeah, that's it. That that brain, that's mine. And so it's, it's awesome. And I'm so proud of him. But at the same time, it's okay. You guys, you're going to completely judge me, but I'm a huge misogynist. I'm a hardcore feminist. And I, I lean sexist. <laughs> that's, that's my, those are my political beliefs. And so I'm sorry for saying this, but we, we, us have the ability to run a household, run a job, be the emotional support animal in the house, carry the mental load. So not only can we multitask with literal tasks around the house, but we can also emotionally multitask and just pick up the slack wherever there is slack. Can I help you? What's up? You need to go potty? Or do you wanna hang out? Okay, come here. So as the emotional support animals, me and Sophia, we do what we do. We do what we're supposed to do. We do our jobs. We do our house manager. We do our, like everything that we do. And when our partner, teammate, or spouse is lagging in a department because it's that season, you know what they say, it's like when you're in a marriage, you give 100, 100. You don't give 50, 50. That's not how it works. It's 100, 100. And sometimes you're at 50 and the other partner has to pick up the other 50. Or sometimes you're at 10 or sometimes you're at 90 and your other, and your partner, you know. So that's the beauty of a relationship is that it's, it's symbiotic and it's relational. So it's, it's always shifting, but it's a team. It's a team effort. And so when we entered into this phase of him being super busy at work, it was also when we were at the peak of baseball. And so having those two things exist parallelly, 
is just, it was just a lot. And so it was exhausting. And what's the first thing to fall to the wayside when the two adults in the house are busy? Your relationship, right? And I don't mean like in a bad or a risky way. I just mean, hey, everyone's tired, so we don't really connect that much. Or everyone's tired, we don't do date night. And I think ultimately for me, when I am a person that is extremely self-aware, I already know what my points of stress or my triggers are, or what gives me anxiety or makes me nervous. And so for me is if I don't feel noticed or appreciated, or I don't feel selected or picked, that's like a dagger through the heart. And so we had this little bout where if, you know, I don't plan date night, date night doesn't happen. If I don't uh, pick a restaurant, like we go to the same places. If we don't uh, wanna see a movie, like if I don't say, I wanna see this movie, like we don't watch a movie. And so, it, it gets exhausting because I feel like I'm not allowed to have a season where I'm checked out, where something else takes priority and I'm allowed to slack a little bit for a lack of a better way to say it. And so I started to feel really frustrated because I'm like, okay, this is a season in life where you get to check out from our home and you know, you don't coach the kids anymore with baseball. You don't go to their games and you're super busy with work, and when you're not, you're super tired and emotionally, physically checked out because you're catching up on sleep. And while we love it and appreciate it and are planting the seeds that we will later harvest, like there has to be some kind of balance. So it really hurt my feelings, and it's hard to talk about without getting a manly response of when you say, if you do this, it hurts my feelings, Typically, a man that's raised traditionally <laughs> and in the older generational bad cycle kind of way, they instantly feel or hear you suck and you're not doing this right. So there's like only one volume or one channel that they hear. If you say this hurt my feelings, they hear you're a bad person, you did something wrong. As opposed to hearing, hey, I'm bringing this to your attention because it hurt my feelings, but I know you can do better. Can we do better together? You know? And so obviously delivery has a lot to do with it, but I think innately when you're raised a certain way, you're wired to hear things a certain way. So it was really hard for us to kind of get that little gunk off, you know, that crust. And the reason I'm sharing is because I'm an oversharer, uh, but also because I think often we have a lot of very shallow adult friendships very fake, superficial adult friendships that everything is fine, everything is perfect. They do ladies night all the time. They're always out and about. Their partner's perfect, they're perfect. Everything's happy and great, but it's like, it's not. That's not what life is. Life is never that way. Life is not sunshines and bubbles and rainbows and puppies. Do I wish it was? Yes. And is that why a lot of people do Valium and Xanax? A hundred percent. But that's not what life is. Life is beautiful because life is messy. Life is nice because life is full of things that you don't expect. And to be able to take those moments in life and look back on them and be thankful that they happened because thanks, thanks to that happening, now you've learned, you've developed, you've evolved, you're a more balanced, controlled, emotionally, like, stable person. I mean, how else are you supposed to learn, right? Anyway, so we had our little season where we were like, I was like, you know what, fine. If you're not, if, if I don't plan date night, date night doesn't happen, then date night's not gonna happen because I'm overwhelmed. You're working all the time, you're busy, you're out of the house. What am I gonna do? Oh, I know, I have a great idea. I'm complaining that we don't spend enough time together, so I'm gonna open another business. <laughs> when I sit here and I give you these long-winded vlog moments, it's not to say, everybody, look at me. Look at how awesome I am. Uh, learn something from me because I have it all figured out. No, the reason that I talk to you about it is because it is the messy because 
I am not perfect because this is the first time that I'm 39. This is the first time that I'm a mom. This is the first time that I'm a second wife. This is the first time that I'm living everything that I'm living. And I feel like talking about it, sharing it, it creates a sense of actual realness, not TikTok realness, not filtered realness, not vlogger realness, although it's produced and in a studio or like a seven minute vlog. Like, no, this is like real realness. Just, I sometimes feel like it's CCTV. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like me vlogging feels like CCTV. It doesn't feel like actually vlogging. Like, hey guys, this is what we're doing. This is what we're, this is an adventure. It's like, no, this is CCTV. Like you're, you're almost watching me shower or cook dinner or just live because I don't like, I don't, I don't see the value in production or lying or filtering things. Although I do tend to gravitate towards confidentiality, meaning if they're not here to talk about it themselves or defend themselves, and obviously I can't put people on blast. Like there is something going on right now where I'm like, oh my God, you are a psychopath, but I can't talk about it, but I wish I could. I hear her pacing and she has like a couple of different paces. That's how she communicates. She was doing this little pace and I'm like, God, that's like a really anxious pace, Sophia. And what, what's going on? So I had to get up and look and she's like standing by her jug, like <clears throat> her water jug. Anyway, I, I don't feel like I'm gonna get some kind of Oscar here at some point. I don't feel like I'm gonna get some kind of recognition or ever go viral seeing as our social media is on a heavy decline. <laughs> I do feel though that with every message that I get or email or card sent to my PO box or even message in my Etsy shop that just being me, you know, when I went to therapy, I had my, one of my biggest issues was I was bullied as a child and it's traumatized me for life. But thanks to therapy, I learned that my biggest bully was actually my mom. Unbeknownst to her and I don't, say it in a way of, I resent her for it, I'm angry at her for it, or I have any types of negative feelings about it. I'm just happy I understand it now. And it's wonderful too, because now that I am a mom, I can break the cycle, right? And so learning that she was one of my biggest bullies growing up or in my formative years, it's why I have this belief that if I'm not doing something all the time or something important or being the best at what I do, I'm not worth anybody's time. And so that's why I'm like, look, I did this for you. Look, I got this for you. Look, the house is clean. Look, I did all your laundry. Look, I made dinner every night because I think, I think it's a, I think it's a huge elder millennial thing. If you're an elder millennial, you grew up on your self-worth is strictly based on whether or not you are productive. And so now that I am the age that I am and what I'm doing, I'm okay with my YouTube channel being on a decline. I'm okay with enjoying what I'm doing on Etsy, even though it's like collecting one crumb at a time versus YouTube. So like with YouTube, in the past when we were doing really well, like I would sit in front of the camera and make like a thousand dollars a minute. That's just how it was. And with Etsy, it's like sitting down and doing backbreaking labor. I'll, I'll show you what I mean by backbreaking. And you get, you collect like one P at a time, but I love it. I'm enjoying it. And I've given myself permission now in my almost 40 years that if it feels good, it makes me happy, and it doesn't take away from what I'm doing, what I'm supposed to be doing like as a mom or a wife, then I don't owe anybody an explanation, you know? And it was really nice when my mom came to visit. I actually have to show you a picture. When my mom came to visit, I, I never tell her what I'm doing. I never give her an update on what I'm doing or what's new because she always follows up with negative encouragement 
and it 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 stays with me even though I don't want it to it stays with me so I can't even think one off the top off the top of my head but you know most people are raised with oh my god you're doing that that's incredible that's crazy I'm so proud of you show me okay I want to see how you do it like most positive encouragement right and my brother and I were raised on negative encouragement like are you sure that's a good idea like what happens if you don't make enough money how are you going to how are you support your kids with that and that's a lot of work. Isn't that going to take away from you watching your kids? I mean, it's great, but is it a good decision? And I'm not so sure that's so much negative encouragement as much as it is like devil's advo advocating. But like even when I started YouTube and I called my mom and I said, you know, I'm so nervous about starting this. This was almost 12 years ago. Uh, I was like, I'm so nervous. It's Memorial Day weekend. If I don't get 100 subscribers by Monday, I'm just deleting my channel. And the first thing she said was, you're stupid. Like, why? Like, why does it matter? What's the, where'd you get the number 100 from? That's just stupid. Like, that's just a d dumb idea. Why does it matter? If it makes you happy, why are you being so dumb? Like, you know, and so it was great encouragement, but I, I still remember my mom's voice. Like when girls are mean to me at school or picking on me, she was like, it's because they're jealous of you. Like, why are you worried? You're pretty, look in the mirror. You're already hot. Like they're stupid and you're dumb if you're worried about, like, why are you giving them the time of day? And I'm like, you know, it would be nice to hug. <laughs> So now I'm like the mayor of tough guy city. I got to be busy all the time. I don't give a shit. I don't need no friends. I thrive when I'm alone. You know, right now when I dropped off Mateo at school, like Daniel goes in early, then Mateo, I drop off Mateo. Parker's been gone since last night. I'm completely alone. I've been surrounded by people all weekend. And I'm like, this is it. This is my time to shine because I'm alone. And I'm like, God, that is terrible. <laughs> but I do, I do appreciate my solitude. I appreciate being alone. I... I am a lot more productive when I'm alone and uninterrupted because I can like hyper focus and I don't have to like like freak out when someone breaks my, my hyper focus. Oh my, we got completely sidetracked. What I was getting at was we went on date night on Friday and Parker ended up making reservations. He was adorable because after we had the whole conversation of, look, if I don't plan anything, it doesn't happen. If, if I don't say something, it doesn't happen. If I don't choose something, we don't go anywhere. If we don't, I'm like, if, it just, we just don't date because you don't do it. And he's like, well, it's not one of my strengths. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not asking it to become one of your strengths. I'm asking you to notice that I'm not doing it. I realize you suck at planning. I realize you don't even know how to make a reservation. I don't care. I picked you. I knew that was my strength. What hurts my feelings is that if I don't do it, you don't notice I'm not doing it. Oh, he's like, I absolutely noticed, and here's this is man brain. He's like, I absolutely noticed. I just didn't think you wanted to hang out with me. <laughs> you know, while I could absolutely be very simple minded and think that is a cop out excuse, you're being a lazy man, you're just using your man brain as an excuse to like be the victim, that is a rational, emotional, very vulnerable answer, especially because I know how he thinks. And that makes perfect sense to me. If I don't proactively make the plans, he's sensitive like I am. So I was sensitive that I always had to do it. So I stopped doing it. Then I hurt my feelings even further because he didn't notice that I didn't do it. So I was like, well, okay, I guess he doesn't like hanging out with me. And then his response was like, she's not doing it anymore. So I guess she doesn't want to hang out with me. So if we as humans in our like 40s don't have vulnerable conversations like do you see how badly that could have been lost in translation that message could have been lost and been so damaging and so hurtful I'm like wow so we had this conversation and a couple days later he texts me and he's like would you like to have sushi with me <laughs> I had my feelings hurt because I kept telling him that I was craving sushi. And for me, that's my poor communication skills. I wasn't like, hey, can you make reservations at sushi? Because I want you to take me on a date. It was like, oh, I really want sushi. I really want sushi. I really want sushi. And like, it never happens, you know? But I know he can plan things because he like plans way ahead and buys movie tickets to take his daughter somewhere. So I'm like, I know you can think, but why can't you think like that all the time? Or with, with like me in context. Anyway, my feelings were hurt like bad. 
blood. I'm talking psycho feelings hurt like bad. So he plans uh, taking me to sushi. He's like, you want to go to sushi with me? It was adorable. It felt very like high school slipping you a note kind of thing. We went to the sushi place. That's like, uh, wow. Like all of their fish is flown in from that really famous Japanese seafood market, like in Japan, sort of like in, um, is it Seattle, Portland? where they have that fish market, sort of like that. It's like their version of that market. And like every dish is like two bites of food. Anyway, we were there for an hour, maybe an hour and a half. The restaurant is amazing. I would definitely go there for like an anniversary. They have this like 18 course sit with the chef type meal. I would definitely go there for like a date night, but to go there and grub on like fake Americanized sushi wasn't cutting it. So we had two cocktails, we finished like seven dishes and we're starving still. And he's like, hold on a second. He pulls out his phone and he's like, I can get us a reservation across the street. At the Americanized, really like silly sushi restaurant. And I was like, we can't do that. They're gonna see us, we're gonna get caught. Oh my God, like, no, I'm such a dork with stuff like that, you know? Like, I'm like, oh my God, we're gonna get in trouble. And he's like, we're paying, we're going to pay, then we're going to leave, and then we're going to go pay somewhere else. We could totally do that. The whole date was magic. We left there. We went to another place. I mean, it was like going on our first and second date all over again. It was brilliant. It was amazing. And it was so uh, great to see how developing your communication skills pays off. It was great to see how being vulnerable pays off. It was great to see and just like re-feel, like feel those feelings that you feel when you are in a newer relationship, like a fresh relationship, just those little spark reminders. I actually talked to one of my girlfriends about, not this, but the conversation came up about how opposites always end up together, right? And how at the beginning of a relationship, it's what attracts you, is the opposite thing, is what attracts you. I fell in love with Parker because he anchored me. He calmed me down, he chilled me, he made me feel safe and quiet. And otherwise, I'm just impulsive and, you know, just uh, emotional and not in a bad way. I love that I'm passionate, but I also am anxious and uh, impulsive because I'm nervous and scared or feel unsafe. And with him, I feel safe. He grounds me. He makes me feel calm. But I also know that I'm the planner, I'm the organizer, I'm the one that knows how to keep, I don't know, a budget or plan a trip. And he sucks at all of those things. And not because he wants to, it's just a strength of mine, so why not take advantage? And so now as we've been together for, I don't know, six years or something, he's like, oh my God, you are, I don't even know like an example, but he basically implies that I'm way too emotional. I'm way too passionate. I'm like, if I get mad, I get too mad. And I'm like, that's why you picked me because you said that you are boring. You are too calm. You have no feelings. Hello. He's like in law enforcement. They have zero capacity for feelings. They put everything away. That's why they all have PTSD. You know, they have to compartmentalize their emotions to stay safe. And that's why you picked me. And now it's what you don't like. And same thing for me. I'm like, I picked him because he let me be the leader. He let me make the reservations. I said, I want pizza. He'd be like, me too. I want to go here. He's like, me too. And now I'm like, well, you never plan anything. Well, okay, because I'm a fucking controlling asshole and he let me and now I'm complaining that he's not taking the lead, you know? <laughs> so anyway, if you ever get frustrated because you are in an opposites attract situation and now what you were attracted to from the beginning now is what's annoying you, just consider that. I think it's a really great grounding or learning opportunity or reminder of, of everything. I turned on my vlogging camera because I was gonna show you a little Ulta haul that I just received, but I don't even know if I'm gonna post it in this vlog because now this vlog's gonna be like an hour and a half long. I'm worried. Let me make an impulsive 30 second decision. Should I include it? Should I include it? Should I include it? Should I include it? Because I still wanna show you the keychains that I made this weekend and why I'm so tired and why my back hurts. <laughs> 
YOLO, everybody. YOLO, am I right? You see the little pink note on my frame? Parker went around the whole house putting little post-it notes because he's going to be gone all week. And uh, I thought it was cute. But the places that he's put the notes in is what's hilarious. Because you have like your usual, like he put one on my computer monitor over there and one over here on my little workstation. Obviously the one behind me, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Gotta remember to take that off before I film. But there's some like really random places where he put some and it's just hilarious. But anyway, uh, random Ulta haul. So for months, they launched, rewind. They launched these lip oils from Essence in Europe. I think they are a UK brand. And they launched these lip oils and they launched their first. Everything that launches there first always comes here, usually. But it took them a minute to get here and I couldn't find them, but they were listed on the website, but listed as out of stock. So I put in my email and I actually got a notification that said, what did the notification say? Uh, it's back in stock. So I was like, wait, back in stock? Oh, it's those oils. Anyway, I ordered them. I think they're like $2 each. And, well, that's random. That's a random way to pack stuff, but I guess it's safe. So that's what I got. I got one of each. They were like two bucks. I thought because I was diamond, I got free shipping no matter what. But I guess that's not the case because I had to keep adding things to my cart. I saw this and it reminded me of, what do you think? What do you think this reminded me of? Do you see? Do you see the sparkles in there? It reminded me of the Caress body wash that they discontinued. It's a firming and toning. You know what? Tree Hut needs to stop doing these like firming and toning and this and that. It kind of smells like the Caress body wash, if I'm honest. I mean, it works. All right. Look at that. I mean, who doesn't want that? Can you see? Hold on. Can you see the sparkles in there? sparkles in the body wash okay so we got that I got the back me warrior I don't think I've ever seen this before but my murad one is about to run out I hope you can spray this upside down though because the murad one you can like turn it upside down and spray and it still works but this is from Pacifica it's like the back me warrior salicylic I think the one that I use from murad is also two percent so I hope that I can spray it upside down because that's the biggest selling points about the Murad one for me, aside from the fact that it works. Then I got this. I think it was 40% off. It had some weird sale. I don't know why. I don't know why Truly products, Truly, not the Truly, but like Truly at Ulta, they're so expensive. And I, let me spray it first because I want to make sure I made a good decision. Maybe, okay. On first spray, it was really bad. Okay, now it smells good. This is a body mist from Truly, but I, I got it because of the name and the color, because it's pink. Do you see it? I'm not saying it in case you're watching with littles. There we go, right? Like who doesn't want to smell that? Whose curiosity isn't piqued by that name? Okay, it smells nice. I'll wear it as a body splash, but it didn't change my life. It smells a little bit like cologne, let's be honest. Okay, and then this was the reason that I got all of those other things. Oh, I remember, it was buy one, get one, 40% off for body products. And then these were on sale, like the whole brand was on sale. I don't remember what the percent was, but I was like, oh, finally, they're on sale and they're still a little bit expensive. Yeah, it smells good, but it definitely smells like saffron and a little bit cologne -y. Okay, so these are the guys that I'm telling you about. Look how cute they are. So they're from Essence, they're a couple bucks. They're lip oils. I don't like this camera because the viewfinder is like this, so I can never tell if I'm actually showing you what I'm trying to show you. Look how pretty they are. I thought they were adorable. Do I need another uh, lip oil? No, I don't. Do I have too many? Absolutely. Is that gonna stop me? No, ma'am, it's not. Okay, let's try this one. This is the, 
Which one is this? Where does it say the name? Mandarin Miracle. Regular applicator. It's like one of those, the doe foot applicator, but like a little one. Same. I don't get a smell. Oh, I love that it's an actual oil that's not sticky. All of these drugstore brands, man, they're like, oh, come try our new oil. It's so awesome. I'm like, oh, that is a gloss. Stop trying to call everything oil now because it's the new buzzword. You know, it's the new buzzword. So everyone's like, the buzzword used to be matte. Then the buzzword was glow. Now the buzzword's illuminating. Now it's skin-like serum or skin, skin-like skin finishing serum. Or serum was one, you know? God, that smells like something I already know. Something very familiar. Maybe a lot of people smell like this. It smells nice. I'm not sure it's something that I could pull off, but it does, does smell nice. Okay, nice. It's average. It's a basic lip oil. I like it. I don't regret getting it. Vitamin E. What else do we got? Mm, it says Mandarin scent and vitamin E. I don't get any scent. What is this? Mint magic. Okay, that one's minty. So that one's gonna make your lips a little pink from the blood flow. This is strawberry. All right, strawberry. Yeah, I'm getting that, I'm getting the strawberry. I wonder why I couldn't smell the orange. Cherry, well that, that does smell like candy cherry. Oh, this one has sparkles in it. It looks like my nails. Coconut crush. Oh, that's nice. It smells like toasted coconut. Okay, I'm gonna smell this one more time. Maybe it's a me thing. Okay, I can smell it now. Very, like a hint, like a tiny little hint. Anyway, that's my Ulta haul. And that's all I'm gonna share with you guys this morning because I gotta get to work. I have to make a custom lanyard and two custom bracelets. I gotta actually focus because I started talking to you guys at nine. It's 10 o'clock. This is the kind of person I am. Remember when I said hyper focus? This is this is what I was talking about. I'm like, I gotta do a really good job at this part of the vlog. And then psh, there goes an hour. Okay, I just sat down to wrap some orders, but I wanna show you guys what we're sending out. Look how cute this is. A little dog tag for Miss Aria. Isn't that pretty? It has the iridescent glitter. So it's going to glow a little bit more and be a little bit more sparkly like in the sun, which you can see like little clay slices. And uh, they just requested flower slices. Then we have two for brother and sister. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I put the same charm on both just because, you know, they both have the same... Can you see the charm? I'm trying to be really careful so I don't show the phone number. But they both have this little silver paw charm. How cute is that? I love that these tags, these pet tags, have sort of like a Where's Waldo effect to them. So like the more you look at them, the more you see the little slices that are in there. Then we have a memory, like a memorial type keychain that was requested. So we have this one for Miss Febby. How beautiful that is so sweet another picture we put some little flowers here in the corner and it was like a pink and purple and the little charm is a paw we put a little butterfly and some angel wings how cute we have another one similar they requested short and I wanted to show you guys the difference so the keychain itself is kind of where the lobster clasp begins See the difference between short and long? So you could still get it short with charms, but the charms, instead of being in between the resin and the clasp, I put them at the bottom. So it's like a separate little strand of charms. So that's the difference between a short and a long. Do you see that? The charms, instead of being in between the resin and the clasp, they're next to it, like next to the, the resin. Okay, this one, look how pretty. Look at this munchkin, the little face. Those bangs though, I love those bangs. And I don't know if you guys can see the name, 
I did small gold letters. It says Cali. I really liked how that looks. Instead of the letter beads, it was Creative Liberty. So I hope they love it because otherwise it would be like just the round beads with the white background. I don't know, but something about the gold in this keychain just spoke to me to do these letters instead on the bright green grass. And then we got the little charms here in the wristlet. Then we had a custom phone grip request for Nana. She's like, I like Hello Kitty, do anything you want. And I was like, do you want me to put a name or something on it? So I put it so that it was kind of blendy. Do you see how it kind of blends into her shirt? And I love that. It's sort of the same colors, but it's, it's like, it's blendy. It kind of mixes into the look. So it's not gonna be a, wait, what does it say? It just, it looks like part of the image, or if you already know it's there, you're gonna know it says Nana on it. So I thought that was so cute. Then we have this one for Gray Team. I was like, I can put Gray Team on the back, but I feel like I'm missing a sports reference. And she's like, no, no, it's just what we call them. I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> it's like, I don't wanna just put Gray Team. And it's like, I don't know, the, I don't the the Gray Eagles of, Seattle or whatever. I don't see, I don't know teams. Uh, she's like, no, it's just what we call them. So we had a two-sided rectangle keychain. Were those poppers? Gray team, you see, little gray team. And then we put some charms on there as well. Family, a black paw, and a little bone. That was the only bone I had. I'm like, oh gosh, I gotta figure out where I got this bone. I got this one from Miss Piper. This is one of my favorite ones that I have ever, ever done. I was really excited when she said, hey, I just want fruits, but have some creative liberty. And I really love how it turned out. It's like girly, but not pink. You know, like the glitter is kind of pink. I mixed some glitter colors. Let me cover the phone number so you can see a little bit better. I mixed some of the glitter colors so it would look pinkish but not so much like a pastel pink or like a hot pink almost like a it's like a mauvey purple it's really pretty and then the the little fruits and here's the thing is when you order these types of resin tags most people that do them they just do a ton of glitter slices and mix it with the resin and then set it so there's a ton of pieces but I actually do a thin layer of resin and then set a single layer so that you can actually see all the slices that are in there. So if you tell me to do like 14 lemons and one orange, I can do that because I set those slices first before I cover it with the rest of the resin. So you can actually see what the images are instead of them all being like jumbled up and like mixed inside. We can do that if you want, but <laughs> that's not the way that I, um, I do it usually. Then we have this beautiful one as well. This is another memory, uh, like memorial type keychain. Look at this, sweetie. It looks like Popo. Oh my goodness. She said, Can I have a picture on the front and then forever in our hearts on the back? But no context of how, what, how to say it, what to say. So I think a cute little logo. We did an outline on it, put the words on the bottom with the rose gold glitter in the back. And then this is a long key chain. So we did the pink paw, we did faith, and then this little pink charm. These are all charms mom requested specifically. She said this, this, and this. So those were the ones she picked. So we put those on her keychain. We got Miss Maya. Wait for it. <laughs> she was like, do whatever you want. All I know is she likes to play with her pink toys more. So I was like, oh, say no more. Let's make it pink, but fun. So the little pink clouds, some bows, little bunny, some strawberries. Again, pink, but not sweet. You know, it's like pink, but fun. We have a personal keychain. So I think this is just for her. Her name is Sandy. Look how pretty. Pink, purple. We got some Mickeys in there, some flowers, little pigs. Gold letters, oh, these are the gold letters I was telling you. So these are the gold letters versus the stickers that I used on Callie's keychain. And then a few charms. We did a clover. And all of these charms hang in different. So because the lobster clasps twists, 
the charms will always be in a different spot. So it's not one of those like on a necklace where there's a front and a back side. It will, they'll always be facing a relevant side. So we have heart, clover, a little Sagittarius. I should probably show you instead of my face. Here we go. And then this one was a really special one. We had a conversation about it and she was like, I want this message and this message. How it looks, what colors, whatever, you you do what, what you think. I'm like, say no more. Look how pretty. We did this. So I found these and these. We also have some bright ones. And I bought these as well as like the flat ones. So this is for our friend Andrea. I hope I'm saying that right. So you're Andrea or Andrea. So we did a trust the timing custom for her with butterflies in the background and some beautiful purple flowers, the turquoise glitter. And then in the back, it says, let peace be your guide. I think is what she said. Yeah, let peace be your guide. Same thing, lots of butterflies. And then it's silver long. And we did believe, where is it? There we go, believe, a butterfly and an A for her name. The cool thing about these too is if you don't like the wristlet, you don't have to. It's not put on there in any kind of permanent way. In fact, it's just removable. So it's a separate thing altogether. This is separate. If the charms ever fall off or break, the charm is set on a key ring, a small one. So you could just put that on anything else that you want because that in and of itself is a keychain, a little keychain ring. So it can live a longer life. <laughs> So we gotta wrap all of these and get them going. But before I say bye to you guys, because I have two bracelets and two custom lanyards to work on, look what I'm doing. A mom sent me a message and said, hey, my daughter's going off to college. This is gonna be her alma mater. Her phone lanyard broke. Do you think you can make something with this? And she was so helpful because she actually sent me the website to the school where like all of the logos, the verbiage, the school's name, everything is listed on there with the files. I guess it's a way for the school to control how their image gets out there or how you use their branding. So I took one of those pictures and I got it really, 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 really small and I put it in a heart. Can you see? I put it in a tiny little heart, the little dragons in there. And I'm gonna put that on the, um, do you remember the, oh my goodness. Okay, so when you order a cell phone lanyard, it comes with a um, charm dangle that's removable in case you don't like the sounds or the jingle that it makes. And they usually look like this. You get to pick your word. If it has a horseshoe, then you can pick another charm if you want. So this is a Sagittarius. So I'm thinking similar to this, but we'll put the charm, like the resin charm, but I still haven't decided if I'm going to put it on the actual lanyard, like threaded into it like a bracelet, or if I should put it on here so that if she doesn't like the bulk, like she wants it nice and just smooth like a bracelet, she has that choice. But I'm thinking what I'll do is put it on here, but instead of, so like the length, actually here's, here's a blank slate. So I cut the chain first, then I put on the lobster clasp second, and then to kind of weigh it down, I'll add the horseshoe. So all the cell phone lanyards that you get always have a horseshoe at the bottom. So I'm thinking for hers, instead of the horseshoe, I'll put this heart, um, heart charm with her school's mascot on it. Isn't that cool? I'm like, yeah, I love that. So anyway, it is when the last time I told you it was 10, now it's 11. So I have to get cracking before I have to do mom and after school pickup and all that stuff. But all the stuff that we, I didn't show you much this vlog. I really got to get out of that habit. Like, why am I even vlogging? Like, we're not going anywhere. I'm not showing you anything. Anyway, anything that I mentioned, 
like the lip oils. Anything that I mentioned will be listed and linked in the description box of this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed hanging out with me. I know I did. And I appreciate you guys allowing me to spend time with you because as much as I feel I take so much of your time, I'm just hoping deep down inside that there is some kind of benefit to it. You know, that I do keep you company that maybe, I don't know, I shared something that you're like, oh crap, you know, we're having that same, feeling right now or we're in the same season of life or oh finally that's exactly what I was trying to say and I didn't have the words to say it so that's what I'm here for I fall on the sword for you guys <laughs> anyway I love you guys so much and you know what to do if you found this video useful entertaining and learned something please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and until next time this coffee break is over bye guys